So what a week one it was here in the fantasy football season. But here's a few running backs I've looked at on waivers heading into week two of the fantasy football season. The first guy's Elijah Mitchell of the San Francisco 49ers. So right here, another season and another injury here for Raheem Mostert. He left the game pretty early in this one versus the Detroit Lions with any injury. And Trey Sermon was inactive in this ball game, surprisingly. And Eli Mitchell and Hasty got the carries in this game. So right here, Mitchell looked very impressive in this one. And he's going to be one of the top waiver wire reds this week at the running back position. Raheem Mostert, you just can't count on him. I'd said it before coming into the season, it was a running back to avoid because of his injury concerns. But I thought Trey Sermon, obviously, would have been the man to take over. But now Mitchell, he's going to be a force in that backfield, in my opinion. We'll see if Mostert could play next week. But him being out of the ball game early, obviously, wasn't a good sign. So Mitchell finished the day versus Detroit. 19 carries, 104 yards in this one with a rushing touchdown. But next week, if Mostert's out, obviously, I think Trey Sermon's going to be the man over there. But right now, Mitchell, it's going to be his spot to lose, in my opinion, if Mostert... Even if Mostert plays in this ball game, I think they're going to split next week here. So next week, a pretty decent matchup at the Philadelphia Eagles, even though the Eagles look good shutting down the whole Atlanta Falcon offense in week one. But right here, if Mitchell's the starter, he's going to be a hot head in, in waiver wire pickups this week. And right now, he's available in 93% of fantasy leagues. The next running back I've looked at on waivers this week is Tony Jones Jr., and the New Orleans Saints of the Saints. A lot of guys emerging in this game week one here versus the Green Bay Packers. And Tony Jones Jr., he got a full workload pretty much for a guy splitting in the backfield with Alvin Kamara. 11 carries, 50 yards, and a catch for three yards in this game. So Tony Jones Jr., he's available in 77% of fantasy leagues. And right here, I know some of the carries came in garbage time, but he's a good in-between guy. Good change of pace back. And right here, he should be owned in more fantasy leagues. And next week, he's got a pretty decent matchup of paper on Carolina. So right here, Jones, if he's out there in your league, I think he could do some things for fantasy owners. And it wouldn't surprise me to see him steal some goal line carries as well because he's a little bit of a bigger and a physical back than Alvin Kamara. But obviously, Alvin Kamara, once in a generational type of running back, but we've seen it the last few years here with a change of pace and a decent backup for Kamara with him and Ingram a few years ago, him, then him and Latavius Murray, who they just got rid of because of a pay cut. And now Tony Jones playing that role. So I think he should be owned in more fantasy weeks. And a pickup this week, the next pickup is former Saint. I just mentioned Mark Ingram of the Houston Texans. So the Texans, they have three running backs over there, David Johnson, Ingram, and Lindsay, but right here versus the Jacksonville Jaguars, Ingram was the leading dog with 26 carries, 85 rushing yards, and a rushing touchdown in this one versus the Jacksonville Jaguars. So obviously he outtouched all these guys pretty easily in the backfield over there in Houston. And in Houston, they played pretty good football, even though I know it's a young, young and up and coming Jacksonville team. So Ingram, he looks like about the bell cow over there, especially obviously in between the tackles and goal line carries, even though Lindsey vultured one later in that ball game. And next week, he's got a matchup at the Cleveland Browns. With well, the Browns, they had the Chiefs on the ropes in that ball game, but right here, they couldn't get the job done. So next week, it might be a little tough sledding for Mark Ingram, but Ingram right now is available in 81% of fantasy leagues. And if there's a guy on your wire like Ingram who had 26 carries in a game, you definitely got to go out there and in my opinion, the next running back I looked at this week's Tevin Coleman of the New York Jets. A lot of people thought coming into the year, Michael Carter was going to be the clear cut number one running back. But Coleman, he got a decent workload in this ball game here for the Jets. Nine carries, 24 yards. Obviously, that's not much for fantasy owners. But in this game, he got most of the touches. Like I mentioned, Carter only had four touches in the game. And Trey Johnson, he didn't do much in this ball game as well. For the New York Jets. So Coleman right now. I know he struggled. He didn't have a great game. And the Jets played a lot of catch up in this one. But Coleman's the veteran. He looked good on a few runs. And next week. Versus the New England Patriots. I think they're going to try to pound the ball more. And take some pressure off the rookie quarterback. Zach Wilson here. For Tevin Coleman. So Coleman like I said. He out touched everyone. By four or five touches in the Jet backfield. And right now. 
if you just need some depth on your roster, I don't think he's going to be a big guy to put in your lineup every week is calming. He's available right now in 78% of fantasy leagues and the fifth and final running back. I have a look to add on waivers this week. He's a Le'Veon Bell of the Baltimore Ravens. So right here, I had a video a couple days ago explaining the running back situation over there in Baltimore. And I said pretty much when it's all said and done, Latavius Murray and Le'Veon Bell after this week one matchup versus the Las Vegas Raiders should be the guys over there in Baltimore. So Le'Veon Bell right now still on the practice squad. No word that he got called up yet by the Ravens. But I think that move could be official here tonight in this ball game before they take on the Vegas Raiders. And Harbaugh said the other day he's still getting his legs on the room. So Le'Veon Bell right now, he's available still in 55% of fantasy weeks. So right here would be your last chance and opportunity, in my opinion, to get him off waivers. Because if Bell does play a decent role in, let's say, week two or three here and has a big ball game, the window's going to close of picking him up. So I would take Bell, but I don't think he's going to do much here tonight or even be active, like I mentioned versus the Raiders, but right here, he's definitely worth a shot and taking a gamble on, so that's a few running backs I've looked at on waivers here, heading into week two of the fantasy football season.